government this Friday pledging to submit a bill to parliament to abolish Ukraine's non-aligned status and to resume the policy of achieving NATO membership, a pledge that has perked the ears of NATO's Secretary General. Let me remind you of NATO's decision uh, taken at the Bucharest summit in 2008, according to which Ukraine will become a member of NATO. In the meantime, um, Ukraine has decided uh, to pursue a so-called non-alliance policy. We fully respect that. We fully respect uh, if the Ukrainian parliament decides to change uh, that um, uh, policy. Well, joining us now from Kiev, Ukrainian ambassador at large, Oleksandr Sherba, and in our studios, Douglas Herbert, France 24's international affairs desk. Uh, before I turn to the ambassador, back in 2008, it was uh, then U.S. President George W. Bush who had to backpedal when it came to Ukraine joining NATO. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't even a, a question uh, back then. But right now, you know, the geopolitical situation has changed. And we have spoken quite a bit how this whole NATO question has become sort of the line in, line in the sand, at least from uh, Vladimir Putin's standpoint. And a lot of people would say that this entire conflict boils down to that, i.e. preventing the possibility of Ukraine joining the uh, Western uh, Atlantic Alliance, which seems to be right now the direction in which Ukraine's going. Uh, Ambassador Sherba, let me ask you, this uh, uh, pledge by uh, the Prime Minister to submit it to Parliament that Ukraine try to join NATO, is that not going to further antagonize Moscow? Well, first of all, uh, we uh, uh, are not worried about further antagonizing Moscow because Moscow uh, uh, is keep sending tanks uh, and military personnel uh, and uh, heavy equipment to Ukraine. It destroyed our border. It takes away uh, hundreds uh, and thousands of our Ukrainian lives. Uh, it doesn't, it's not, uh, Moscow doesn't seem to be afraid to antagonize Ukraine and to antagonize the world, quite frankly. They don't care. So uh, for Ukraine is the only way out to uh, rethink some uh, things uh, in our strategy uh, towards the outside world before this war started. We had too much to lose with Russia. And the uh, perspective of getting the NATO membership was too shaky. Now we basically have nothing more to lose with Russia. Putin burned all the bridges towards Ukraine, literally and figuratively. And uh, all, we, all we can rely right now and all we understand now that there are two groups of countries in Europe. The one that can get attacked and can, can get humiliated and take, be taken apart by Russia. And the one that can't. The first group is all Russia's alliances, uh, of Russia's neighbors outside the alliance. And the second group is the NATO members. It, it's a natural desire to be in the second group, finally. Sir Doug Herbert in the studio, uh, let me ask you a question that might seem obvious. Does this then mean that absolutely no way, no how, is Ukraine going to join at any point the customs union with Russia? No way, no how. Categorical. It's not going to happen, ever. Categorical. Not going to happen. And, and no, no. Especially, especially after this atrocity that uh, Putin uh, brought onto us. No, no. All the bridges have been burned. Let me ask you, you say all the bridges have been burned. Um, I was listening to some remarks that Vladimir Putin, Russian president, was making before at a youth camp today. And he said, and these were his words, the Ukrainians and the Russians, in his opinion, are practically one people. He almost says our countries are the same. There's no difference. Well, Vladimir Putin is the man who, on uh, August 27th, shook hands with the uh, Ukrainian president and smiled at him. And when he left Minsk, the chair where he was sitting was still warm. And he sent in the tanks to Ukrainian city of uh, Novozovsk. So please bear with us if we don't take his words too seriously. Ambassador Sherba, what are you expecting from next week's uh, NATO summit in Wales? We expect 
support from the West. Ukraine is fighting not only Ukraine's war. Ukraine is fighting Europe's war. Ukraine is getting punished for choosing freedom and democracy. As simple as that. So when you're, saying you're, you're asking, when you're saying you're asking for support, does that mean that you want more logistics coming in soon? What, what kind of a timeline, what kind of support are you talking about? We are losing our young boys in the east of the country daily who are badly equipped, who are underpaid, and who are frowned upon from, even from the West, although they are fighting Europe's war. And they are the only thing that stands between you, between your comfortable reality in Western Europe and the reality of relapse, full relapse into the Cold War and even worse, because the Cold War was just the separation of two parts of the world. Now these parts of the world are interconnected. And if you don't want a wave of refugees knocking at your, uh, at your door tomorrow, then do something about it right now. Help Ukraine with weapons, with military instructors, uh, and with uh, uh, financial support, because we are fighting this war on, 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 uh, on the verge of our forces. Final thing I just want to ask you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is the real threat, the real possibility that Russia could shut the gas pipelines this winter. Uh, Ukrainians would be very, very cold. Are you ready for that possibility? How, will you how would you deal with it? We know that we can expect anything uh, from uh, that country. Uh, we are very united right now. We are very angry, very disappointing, uh, disappointed in uh, this betrayal uh, by the country that we saw, many of us saw as a brotherly nation. And we are ready for anything. Many people are ready to go to fight and to lose their lives. So you ask your questions. You answer your questions. Under what conditions, uh, Alexander Sherba, would uh, uh, President Poroshenko sit down with uh, Vladimir Putin uh, once again? We heard the Russian president earlier in the day saying that uh, there's a lot that can be negotiated, but right now there seems to be a scramble, as he put it, on the part of Ukrainian forces ahead of those negotiations. Well, uh, again, uh, the president of Ukraine said with the president of Russia unconditionally this week. All he got in return was this blunt, unashamed uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine's south. So uh, we have to figure out how to proceed with the dialogue of this person, with this person and with this country. France's foreign minister has told our channel that uh, it is definitely a case of one country sending military forces into another. What kind of sanctions would you be expecting on Saturday from uh, that EU summit that's to take place in Brussels? Uh, the sanctions are already working, uh, financial sanctions, first of all, sectoral sanctions. And please, I'm addressing you in Paris, please don't sell the Mistral, because Putin is not only fighting the war, he is making a point. And he, the, the point he is making is that freedom is not a necessity, it's a luxury. You can live without it, but money is what runs the world. And if you sell uh, the Mistral, then you help him to prove his point. How will you react if France sells that amphibious warship, the Mistral, to Russia? That would be a, a huge blow uh, and a huge disappointment. Alexander Sherba, when we look now at the way the situation has unfolded since uh, February, uh, would you say that you're surprised at the way the events have unfolded? In the beginning, it was a complete shock. <laughs> I'm the one who always tr was trying to understand Russia. I'm the one uh, of millions of Ukrainians who have very close, very, very deep roots with Russia. And to see the Russian nation do what they have been done uh, to Ukraine, taking away Crimea, and then celebrating, and then uh, basically trampling upon our uh, flags, uh, it, was, it was a life-changing experience. It was a bitter, bitter shock. 
And I want to leave you with this question, uh, Mr. Ambassador, once again returning to Vladimir Putin's words today. Speaking to that same youth camp, he compared what the Ukrainian army is doing around the cities of Donetsk and Luhansk to the siege of Leningrad in World War II. How do you react to that? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's a travesty. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of these uh, techniques, you know, they, uh, someone shells the cities, brings uh, on terrible atrocities, people keep dying. People, uh, it, it, it's, it's a tragedy repeating every day. Every morning we wake up and there are 10 more people dying from, from, the, from the shelling and so on and so forth. 10 minutes after the shelling, after this happens, a Russian reporter is on the spot. He takes a shot of the bleeding dead body, then turns to the uh, bypassers, onto the relatives, and asks the same question. You understand, it's Ukrainians. You understand, what, what is your, uh, what, what, what's uh, the message, what message would you send to uh, President Poroshenko? And uh, they are just, you know, pouring uh, gasoline into this fire. The truth is, Nobody knows for sure in each particular point who is doing this, uh, these atrocities. But Ukraine was the one who was all for sending the OEC observers who would basically uh, look at, into it and who would impartially make their conclusion who is doing this in each particular case. The first thing the so-called separatists who, after the Malaysian airplane, we can use, call them terrorists, I think. Uh, uh, what they arrested all of the OSC uh, uh, observers, and they spent uh, many weeks uh, uh, as their hostages until released. So uh, you figure out Ukraine is the last side that would be interested in this atrocities happening on our land because we will be the ones who will have to, re who, to restore lives in these cities. We will be the ones who will have to live with these citizens uh, who are starting to hate us because of the Russian propaganda, because of the Russian interpretation of events. So uh, you figure out, I think Ukraine is the last uh, party who would be interested in something like this, but Putin doesn't want to hear about it. Ambassador Alexander Sherba, many thanks uh, for joining us today from Ukraine. Ambassador Sherba, uh, ambassador at large for the Ukrainian uh, Foreign uh, Ministry. I also want to thank uh, Douglas Herbert. And as you just heard, the, the ambassador there saying that uh, for him, a, civ um, a customs union with Russia is a concept that is dead in the water after the events of this week. Stay with us. There's more to come on France 24.